Kent stand firm to hold Middlesex pressure and draw. As day four dawned, Kent and Middlesex appeared on course for a draw at Canterbury, that is unless Middlesex could conjure up some early wickets. And the early signs were promising. Matt Milnes saw his bails dislodged on 16, thanks to the bowling of Miguel Cummings and an inside edge. With a century in sight, set batsman Joe Denley attempted to press the accelerator in a bit to put Kent in the driving seat. However, Denley's efforts stalled by a terrific ball from James Harris, which shaved the top of the batsman's off stump bail to send him back to the pavilion for 89. A Boyd Middlesex soon had Kent eight down, Martin Anderson finding the edge of Darren Stevens, Sam Robson with the safe hands. Grant Stewart would soon be taking the same path back to the pavilion. Harris again with a breakthrough, snaffled by Max Holden at backward point. The Kent lower order were powerless in the face of the Middlesex attack. Habadula Kadri threw his bat at a wider one. Cummings wrapped up the Kent innings to claim a five-wicket haul. Despite Denley's best efforts and his standout 89, after a smart morning shift from the Middlesex bowlers, Kent found themselves 78 runs adrift. Now the visitors needed to bat for a couple of hours and declare if they were to try and go for a dramatic second Bob Willis Trophy win. With time running out to force a result, the Middlesex opening pair of Sam Robson and Max Holden looked to clock up the runs quickly. Holden took on the leading role, three boundaries dispatched in one over. Both Robson and Holden carried their bats to lunch, with Middlesex on 34 without loss and a lead of 112. The resumption after the lunch break saw Middlesex make great strides, Robson and Holden fair racing out of the blocks. The pair's rapid rate of scoring saw the 50 partnership chalked up from 82 balls. And the runs just kept on coming, boundaries and speed between the stumps, a powerful combination. The aggression soon reaped benefits as Holden reached his half century of only 59 balls. He continued his enterprising innings, the 100 partnership came up. And then, just to rub a little salt into Kent wounds, he dispatched Marcus O'Riordan into the stands. Robson would soon join his opening partner in reaching his half-century milestone. His just a little slower, off 96 balls. As the afternoon session began to draw to a close, Holden and Robson showed no signs of relenting, continuing to dispatch the Kent bowling attack to all sides of the ground. Holden, though, would find himself attempting one heave too many, advancing down the track and hitting an O'Riordan delivery into the air, gleefully taken by Denley. Much to Kent's dismay, the loss of Holden did little to slow the rate of scoring, Robson taking on the role of chief aggressor. Robson's quick scoring would ensure that Middlesex would go into T, leading by 247 runs. T brought a declaration from Middlesex, which meant Kent would need to chase 248 to win in the final session of the day. After T, Kent's best form of defence was attack, as openers Daniel Bell Drummond and Marcus O'Riordan freed their arms and their fearless approach soon brought up the 50 partnership of only 57 balls. The tide was turning. With the runs flowing and wickets hard to come by though, Captain Stevie Eskenazi and Sam Billings came together to shake hands on a draw. Despite the frustrating rain throughout, both sides will be happy with their four days work. Robbie White, the standout batting performer for Middlesex with his 99. But much kudos must also go to Miguel Cummins and Darren Stevens for their outstanding fifers. Kent will be thanking a superb 89 by Joe Denley for preventing a second defeat, a vital innings that took time out of the game. And despite that late pressure from Messrs Holden and Robson, both sides forced to settle for their first tie of the Bob Willis Trophy.